How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every single day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Saturdays with Jim Valley, 1 p.m. Eastern. Of course, Sundays, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's me, Andrew Zarian. Oh, man, a lot of wrestling going on. I'm feeling it today, I got to tell you. You know, I had the whole day. I'm doing a fake Father's Day this week. It's my, my wife and my kids are visiting my mom in Florida next week, so... Uh, I had told them when to book. I thought Father's Day was going to be this week. I gave them the wrong day to leave. And we just did a redo all weekend. It was a nice weekend. It was a great day for me. But, man, I had to catch up on a ton of wrestling this morning, uh, which I'm not complaining. It was actually a really nice, relaxing morning. I turned on it. I pretty much ran through everything. I still have some, some dominion to watch. But I went through SmackDown. I went to Rampage. I went in through, uh, I went through uh, Dynamite. Raw I'd already seen. But... Man, a lot of wrestling, a lot of good, and a lot of lot of not so great. I, I'm gonna be a little critical on some stuff this uh, this week on the show. But generally, I do a positive show, but a lot of stuff going on. A positive here to begin with. Uh, SmackDown new IC champion Gunther Walter, formerly known as uh, the new IC champion. I gotta tell you, I think this is a um, this is a good move for him. You know, put put the title on someone that's that's big and very well liked uh, to kind of revitalize that mid card title. Considering we have no uh, no world title on TV on either brand, AW and Rampage results obviously will go through some of the good and some of the bad on there. Uh, I'm a little concerned that Jeff Hardy's going to be in that ladder match. We'll talk about that also. New IWGP Champion Heavyweight Champion crowned Jay White, and this is going to lead into something else here, right? Uh, Jay White is the champion. Is this is second or third. Matt, our producer, would know this. He always knows this. Uh, and also, uh, we're going to go through what what's the forecast for WWE and AEW through this summer? Because a lot of changes happening. A lot of uncertainty with injuries. Where's Roman Reigns? How long is Cody out? How long is CM Punk out? What's going on with Danielson? Adam Cole? And a whole lot more. I, I mean, this is a, it's going to be a fun show. Hey, also, before I forget, we're in the first segment. I'm running out of time here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed it up for you guys. Q&As. In the last segment, use the hashtag AskWOL. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition with me, Andrew Zarian. We'll be right back right after this. Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. I'm feeling this Sunday. Feeling it today. I'm glad I'm here with you guys. Also, hey, listen, the head honcho here, the, the leader of the empire, right? Brian Alvarez celebrating a birthday today. Happy birthday to Brian. I was going to ask him to come on. I highly doubt he wants to sit here and talk about wrestling on his birthday with me. I don't think I wouldn't either. I would be enjoying life with my beautiful family if it was my birthday. Uh, A lot to talk about today. Let's start off with SmackDown because they made a couple moves here that I'm, I like. They had a couple of nice stuff happen on this show here. Uh, We started off uh, just some of the results here. I'm not going to dwell on the entire thing but we had a money in the bank qualifying match drew mcintyre and sheamus ended with a dq double dq money in the bank qualifying match lacey evans defeated xia lee lacey's back now she qualifies for the money in the bank imagine she wins it and challenges for the title championship contenders match smackdown women's champion ronda rousey defeated shotzi so this was interesting so you know they're doing a bit of rehab with ronda here and the second run is not as impressive as the first. I, I gotta say, uh, I'm not, I'm not that crazy about this run. I don't know how much of it is is her doing or just fan exhaustion or how she was exited, but she um, she got attacked by Natty, got put in the sharpshooter, and I guess they injured her to kind of make this make a little sense because we've seen this match happen before. We know that these two have trained together. A uh, huge part in Ronda's development as a professional wrestler came from Natty. Uh, she's fantastic, as everybody knows. I don't know how I feel about them going into a match again, but, you know, a lot of things got messed up here. This was... Ronda was supposed to be on the pay-per-view last last week, right? With, uh, with, with a major match that kind of got derailed. So this is the direction they're going in. I'm okay with this. They'll have a good match. It's fine. Now, Gunther... Defeated Ricochet to win the Intercontinental Championship. I think this is a, you know, first time, long time uh, that they're putting this title on someone that I really think could elevate it. Uh, Obviously, listen, Ricochet's fantastic. Uh, There's no knock against Ricochet here, but 
you know, how have they handled this guy since going to WWE? He had about five minutes where there was a spotlight on him. And for who knows what reason, maybe some people know, maybe some people don't. It just, they just veered into a whole different direction and forgot about him. And now, you know, he could, they gave him the IC title. Obviously, he was a tr uh, transitionary champion. And Gunther is now the champion. I'm, I'm okay with this. I don't think people are going to have a problem with Gunther as the IC champion. And it adds a nice level of uh, maturity to that title. Right? I, I would say that this would be the direction to go in if you want to legitimize these secondary belts. Uh, you know, the big the story here, you know, John Cena maybe with Austin Theory. That's a high-profile match for both guys. I, I, I mean, obviously more for Austin Theory than John Cena, but having a John Cena return in some capacity, that's a big deal. Uh, they really wanted to elevate that U.S. title with this. I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, but the IC title, now we see what's happening here, which I'm cool with. Now, the main event, by the way, great TV main event. Very much enjoyed this match. Riddle defeated Sami Zayn. If Riddle lost... He couldn't come on to SmackDown anymore, but he won. So now he is facing Roman Reigns next week. So we're going to get Roman back on TV next week after the fact. The Usos attacked Riddle, uh, and this is leading into that program. So I guess this is how they're going to do it, right? They're going to go with Riddle, then they'll go with Orton, and eventually Drew. And I don't know where they go after that because they are out of opponents. I'm curious what you guys think, the chat room. Who should he face? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity here, and you know this is kind of the problem. For the longest time, we 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 wanted them to, uh, we wanted them to you know maybe have one title. A lot of people were talking about having one champion, uh, focusing the champion, one champion amongst two brands, and now we have that, and we really don't have too many opponents here for him. I think the big story was Cody and what they do with Cody. By the way, Raw with Cody, fantastic, man. Uh, they, they, they did a really good job at, at sending him off to be off TV. He had a surgery on Thursday, all good, and now, now the work kicks in. So you're talking four to six months, four months if you're not a human, like John Cena, you're a robot. So I've, you know, the average person wouldn't come back from this in four months or five months or maybe even six months. But this is a, you know, they have a couple months here to kind of, work that main event positioning also edge let's talk about that edge now he's back to being a baby face because he didn't want to do spooky stuff that's the rumor that's what jay uh, dave said uh he's out of that that group because they're going to be more of a spooky group and edge is now a baby face so i have no idea who he goes in a program with what either it's balor Right, I would say put him in with Balor or totally remove him from that group or anything with them and put him in the main event picture. You know, he's a guy that people thought would get that title when he came back and he faced Roman. Uh, that program, everything was leading to him winning that title and, and kind of this redemption story after all these years, but they didn't go in that direction. They made it into a three-way. They didn't go in that direction. He didn't get the title. And now, you know, he got... Put in this spooky group, and he doesn't want to do any witchcraft or magic, I guess. So bizarre. <laughs> so crazy. Isn't, I mean, we're talking about a professional wrestling show with magic and spookiness. It's always been there, though. We can't complain. So I thought it was overall good stuff. Uh, you know, WWE had an interesting week. Some misses, some hits. A uh, better week than most weeks. And I know that the raw numbers were pretty good. We'll find out SmackDown on Monday. Uh, let's go into some more stuff here. Uh, I wanted to touch on some of the AEW stuff that's going on. I don't know, man. How did you guys feel about Dynamite? Because uh, we're going to continue this in the next segment because there's a lot to talk about AEW. But there's a lot of moving parts here. And I don't know if some of this has to do with the fact... And, and like this week's episode, two weeks ago, I said, you know, if... If there was ever a moment that I would say this is back to the wrestling that I grew up with, it was 97 Nitro, you know, remastered that looked a lot better two weeks ago. I, I thought that MJF promo was fantastic. I know a lot of people didn't care for it. Spoke to a couple of people that were that are within, you know, the business and they were not happy with it. They they 
which is interesting because sometimes you look at things as a fan and sometimes you get the perspective of someone that is in the business and works this and understands it and they see things from a million miles away from where you are which is not saying it's wrong but it's a very different perspective but i thought this week uh this show was a little all over the place they started off with that battle royal right kyle o'reilly won the battle royal eliminated yuda to win the uh, the Eliminator Series Casino Battle Royale. So now we know, okay, the match is going to be Kyle O'Reilly and John Moxley. Right? And then we also had Andrade, Darby, and Wheeler Yuta were the standouts of this. A lot of, a lot of eyeballs on Andrade, which I welcome. I think he should be in there. So they do this whole thing. And already there's some confusion with, with this. And the following, they go to break, whatever. They come back. The following match, there's a new title. The AEW All-Atlantic Championship. So they're running a small qualifier, small tournament here. Uh, Pac, let's see who else, who's in here. Pac defeated uh, Buddy Matthews in this first match. We also have uh, Ethan Page and Miro coming up. Penta and Malachi Black. And a NJPW exclusive match. So, interesting stuff. I mean, I don't... The name, uh, fine, I guess. The title looks nice. But did they need another belt in that company? I guess you do when you got like 5,000 people on the roster. Right? I, 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 like, all Atlantic, okay. Like, some of these, it's, it's some of the representation of the, the, the flags don't make sense. Has a Chinese flag, has a Japanese flag. They're really not in the Atlantic. So maybe there's another definition of all Atlantic that I don't know. We'll find out. I think it's really interesting, but I want to continue with this because there's a lot more to this than we know. But we'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. We we're talking about AEW, Dynamite. We're going to go into Rampage too, but... Couple things here and there, you know, that were that were great and that were uh, that were a little weird. So uh, the old the old Atlantic Championship has has created such a, a a uproar with the name. I don't mind it. I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to make. I mean, listen. At the end of the day, it's an intercontinental title that they don't want to call intercontinental. They could have called it an international championship, which I would be okay with. But is international bigger than a world? I I I'm sure that they sat down Tony and his think tank. Came up with like 5,000 names that they wanted to honor some some older title. I don't know the exact naming, uh, how they did this. But listen, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to dwell on the, the terribleness or the greatness of the name. Uh, so now we have, you know, another title belt in that company. Obviously, that's a trios title coming as well. And all that Ring of Honor title representation on that TV show. Which, obviously, it's going to go away eventually, right? When Ring of Honor gets that TV deal that they're working on or, or has some sort of syndication in some capacity, either digital or on Turner property, uh, obviously, you're going to see less of those title belts on Rampage and Dynamite. Maybe Rampage, but less on Dynamite. So, right now, it's a, it's, they're in a weird growing uh, phase. There's a, you know, between injuries and everything else happening, uh, they've had to shift multiple times, and these are the end results sometimes. Uh, something else I wanted to touch on here. So, John Moxley defeated Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, the outcome was never a question here, obviously. I think everybody understood that it's going to be Moxley going into that forbidden door pay-per-view. Tanahashi also won last night at Dominion. So, that's set up that marriage. By the way, Tanahashi's hair. I got to talk about this. When we get to Dominion, he looks like every one of my friend's moms from Long Island in the 90s. Beautiful highlights. His hair is done. He was ready. Uh, so we're going to get that match, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, Rampage. Eddie Kingston defeated Jake Hager. I thought this was great. I very much enjoyed this match. Jay Lethal uh, with, uh, with Satnam Singh defeated uh, Davey Vega and Matt uh, Fitchett? Fitchett, I think. Unless that's a typo on my screen. And uh, Chris Stratlander defeated uh, Red Velvet also. And uh, oh, oh, by the way, here's another one. I totally forgot this. It was on the other page. Trent Beretta and FTR defeated Will Ospreay and Aussie Open. This is Ospreay's first match in AEW. I would not have had him lose 
But this is quite obviously leading it to something big here with Osprey. Uh, man, you want to talk about the future of, of the business. You know, he's one of those names. And he looks fantastic. He's put on so much size and he's, you know, changing his style a little bit. He's, he's getting there. But they were over. Kenny in our chat room. They lost, but man, were they over. Uh, I'm, I'm, I really am hoping to see more of him. Dynamite next week. This is, uh, this is where I have a little problem here, right? Chris Jericho versus Ortiz in a hair versus hair match. Nobody's talking about this. Shouldn't this be much bigger than it is? A and I personally feel this was the effect of everything that happened two weeks ago with, you know, uh, the MJF promo, the, uh, the injury to CM Punk. A lot of this kind of took over and people have forgotten that this match was even announced or how it was announced. And, you know, Chris Jericho on a hair versus hair match should be a huge deal. And that's why they're doing it. They're not doing it just to add a stipulation here, right? A lot of Chris Jericho's identity comes from his hair. Uh, I, you know, the, the, the long blonde hair has always been iconic for him. Obviously, he's cut it a bunch of times. But, you know, uh, most people now... Victor in our in our YouTube chat, he hit a good point. He goes, everybody thinks Jericho isn't losing his hair. I feel the same way, unless this is the big swerve and they made you feel like this was a nothing match. But I can't see them doing that for Jericho. Maybe that's part of it, too. They didn't want to emphasize it. But, man, you know, you got two dudes here with long hair. I want to see. I, I mean, I would want to see both uh, if it happens, you know, Ortiz or, or Jericho. I'm into this match. But it kind of it, it got so jumbled up in everything that was happening it was just like, oh, by the way, we're having this blood and guts match. And also the week before, we're going to do this other match. Or however however they said it, right? I'm just putting in words here. Let's see what else we had here on the show. Uh, Wardlow versus 20 security guards in an elimination match. Miro versus Ethan Page to qualify for the, uh, in a qualifying match for the All-Atlantic title. The Bucks versus Hardys versus Jurassic Express for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. In a ladder match. I don't know. Jeff Hardy in another ladder match? After being concussed? It's a little rough here. A lot of people were upset over this. So, uh, let's go into Dominion. By the way, Q&A segment after the break when we come back. Use the hashtag. If you're listening on the radio, tweet me. At Andrew Zarian. And use the hashtag AskWOL. If you're in a number of our chat rooms, our Twitch chat room, our YouTube chat room, use the hashtag WOL there and submit your question. I'll do it my best to get to everything. I think I'm allocating like a minute to every question. I think we'll be able to do it. That's my producer laughing at me in my ear. I don't know if you guys could hear him. Uh, so uh, Dominion, Dominion was a good show. I, I watched some matches, so I had to skip through this. Uh, my day took such a crazy turn here. Uh, I watched the key important stuff. Uh, I got to go back and pay a little bit more attention so, to some of the other things. But we had the big story here is that Jay White has won the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, defeating Kazuchika Okada in another fantastic match. So Jay White afterwards cut this promo. And he he it looks like, you know, he alluded that now that he has the title... Hangman Page could challenge Okada at Forbidden Door, but maybe this is the swerve here, that it, it ends up being Jay White. Also, we got the match that people have always wanted. This guy right behind me that I saw, uh, I've seen multiple times here in the States, Zack Sabre Jr. challenged Brian Danielson, which is the match I think they should be doing. I can't think of a different match for them to do. Obviously, you could talk about Okada, you could bring up all these other names for Danielson to face. But if there was ever a guy that kind of embodies the philosophy of a Brian Danielson in professional wrestling, it would have to be Zack Sabre Jr. For years, we've spoken about, you know, that fantasy match, just in case. If it could ever happen, that would be the match to do. You know, now it is. Now it is the match to do. So now let's look at this lineup for Forbidden Door. We got... Okada has to face somebody. Let's say it's Jay White and Hangman. So that's one match. We got Danielson and Zack Sabre Jr. That's another one. We got Tanahashi and Mox. That's the third one. Where does Okada go? 
right? Where do you put uh, Suzuki? Where do you put uh, Shingo if he's on the card? Where do you put Goto if he's on the card? There's a lot of these mix. I know that they're probably going to end up doing these five on fives just to get some guys on the on the show. But I'm curious, what does the chat room think? Okada versus Cole, a lot of people are saying. Okada and Cole then? How how hyped are you for that match? I'm I'm cool with that. I like I think that's awesome. I'd want to see it. Shingo versus Hangman would have been better. I would love to see Shingo and Hangman. Shingo and Hobbs. A lot of cool a lot of cool mix-ups here. And you know, the success of this show mounts heavily for both companies here. I think people are not, you know, I think a lot of people realize that, but you got to also look at it for the for the long game, right? Because the plan is to have another one in Japan, another Forbidden Door show, which rightfully so, they ha- they should do it to get more of these matches in. But the success of this show in Chicago in a week and a half, two weeks, will really determine the, the relationship for these two and, and how they book and what they do and their whole philosophy Another guy, Ibushi, yeah. How, you know, Ibushi's not on this, right? I, I, you know, there's, there's so many injuries, so much in play. This is a good starter. I, the next one that they do will most likely be, obviously, it'll be much bigger because you'll most likely have Omega back. You'll have CM Punk back. And you'll have all these different combinations for these matches. Very excited for this relationship between the two. I think it was, you know, for the longest time, everybody was very worked up over the fact that they weren't doing the New Japan and AEW stuff from the beginning. And you know what? Three years later, I think we, we them waiting to do this or it not happening was almost like a blessing in disguise. I, I think they had to develop the TV that they had in order to make this successful. What was the other match I saw? I'm trying to think here. I saw the Tanahashi Goto match, obviously. I saw the Jay White Okada match. Oh, Will Ospreay defeated Sonata. I saw that one too. Ospreay's fantastic. I'm gonna, can I say that again? How great he is. Uh, we also got a never open weight championship match. Carl Anderson defeated Tamatanga. Uh, New Japan, uh, NJPW King of Pro Wrestling title, 10 minute unlimited pinfall scramble. It was Shingo. Uh, Shingo defeated uh, Taichi. And uh, tag team, IWGP tag team championship. Great Okada and Jeff Cobb. Defeated Balak Fale and Chase Owens. They also announced G1, our very own, F4W's very own Tom Lawler in the G1 this year. You know what? I should have Tom on before he goes to the G1. Maybe next week I'll ask Tom to come on. I'd love to talk to him about this. Met him in passing once in Chicago. That was it. Uh, So far we got Okada, Tonga, uh, Tanahashi, Tom Lawler, Jonah, Yoshihashi, Goto, Yano. Ishii, Jeff Cobb, Great Okan, Will Ospreay, Aaron Hanari, Shingo, Sonata, Naito, Jay White, Evil, Kenta, Takahashi. Wow, Takahashi's in it this year. Uh, Bad Luck Folly, Chase Owens, Juice Robinson, Taishi, Zack Sabre Jr., Lance Archer, David Finley, and El Fantasmo. This is a very large field. I don't know who who do, who do you want who do you think is going to win the G1 this year? I want to say Tom Lawler dominate this thing. Wrestling Observer Live will be right back after this with your Q&A questions. Stay tuned. By the way, it's Yujiro Takahashi, all right? Not 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 Hiromu. I would have loved to see Hiromu in this, but it's Yujiro. Uh Q&A segment here. I want to I want to get to those questions in a couple minutes. Couple things in the chat room. Let me just add this. Let me let me let me pull this up because I wanted to touch on this a little bit. Um, a lot of people speculating that Osprey should win the G one. I think that'd be great. I think he should. Not bad. Let me find another uh, another one here. What people are saying? A lot of Osprey. A lot of Osprey here. Very cool. So we're going to do our Q&A here. Uh, next week, we'll be taking your phone calls. I'll have the number and everything. So we'll start taking phone calls here starting next week on the show. But I want to uh, I want to get some of these questions in before, uh, you know, before we kind of miss here. Let's, uh, let's go to some questions here, Matt. Our producer extraordinaire. By the way, I'm going to keep this on the screen. Muda 
announced that he's retiring. He said he's going to have five more matches and he's going to retire next spring. Will we see a Ric Flair Muda match? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not encouraging it. But I want to see Muda have one legendary match. Maybe he could do something in AEW. Put him on AEW for one last match. I think that'd be fantastic. Comes full circle on a Turner property. This is from Balor Club Guy on Twitter. Andrew, with Moxie Tanahashi taking place at Forbidden Door. What would the bigger match at All Out be? Punk versus Moxley or Punk versus Tanahashi? Uh, chat room. I want to. Um, I want to. Uh, I want to get your opinion on this too. Which one would you say is the bigger match here? I don't. I. It would have to. You know. I'm gonna tell you for that crowd. I'm gonna go with Moxley. Uh, the heat on that crowd from that crowd. You know, for either one of those guys would be the moment. Uh, I. I listen. I want to see Tanahashi for sure. Punk Tanahashi is a huge match for me, but. Is it that big at All Out? I mean, I'm anticipating he's back by All Out. I can't imagine he's out this long with a broken foot, unless there's some other injury that I'm not aware of. But I would imagine, uh, he hope, we're hopeful that he's going to be at All Out, but it has to be Mox. For sure. Matt, our producer, what do you think? Give me a yes or no. Okay, thank you. Uh, here's another one. Uh, Ian Ress. I guess it's Ian Wrestling. Uh, Andrew, has CM Punk's injury and the Forbidden Door paper you shown that Tony Khan is unable to pivot when there is a bump in the road? Uh, let me. Uh, there we go. Now I can read it all. Thank you. He has proven himself to be a fantastic booker over the last few years, but it only... Bec it's only because he's uh, this font keeps changing on me. Uh, stuck in a long-term plan. No, I think uh, you know Tony's done a great job at pivoting. He's had to pivot numerous times. Uh, you know, there's been numerous occasions he's had to move uh, and change plans. I think what happened with this here, it was just a, a series of unfortunate events in a short period of time. That's kind of you know, it's a night after a pay-per-view. You have your plan for the next one set. You're supposed to start creating all the programs for it, and you get your world champion gets her. So not only do you have to replace the main event of that show, which is a huge show, uh, with a huge fantasy match that people have, you know, fantasy booked for years. A lot of people want to see this match. So obviously that's a that's a big hit there. Uh you have weeks and weeks of TV that you most likely have planned out that now you have to change. I don't think he's done a bad job at this. I think what, you know, there was a lot going on two weeks ago on that show. And they had to change everything this week. So I'm still looking forward to this. This is three years of this company. I think for a three-year-old promotion to book the way they've been booking and, and providing the TV that they've been providing, uh, I, I can't say, you know, listen, short term, you could have flubs constantly. You could have a bad week here, bad two weeks, bad three weeks. It's possible. But when we're talking, you know, six weeks out, 12 weeks out, and your your booking is all over the place. Yeah, that, then I'll say that there's a problem. But I think right now he's doing a really good job with this. Uh, what Did this pivot work? We'll find out. We'll see what happens. The next couple of weeks of TV. All right, what else do we have here? All right, here we go. Kenny Williams asked WOL. Do you guys agree with Jay White's comment last night on the mic after winning the New Jap uh, IWGP World Championship? Uh, that the end of uh, New Jap IWGP U.S. title was the whole reason for the Forbidden Door. He seems to imply that. Uh, yeah, I think that was originally the the plan. Uh, to be honest, I think for the 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 if you were to tell me like, okay, what was the first Forbidden Door moment? It had to be the All In pay per view. That was the first one that incorporated all these different acts from all around. You know, different promotions, uh, independent guys. You know, that was the first Forbidden Door moment, but. Uh, AEW's done a very good job at changing how we perceive talent on TV when it comes to other promotions. We've seen great success from guys that aren't theirs. You know, they're always presented in a big way. I think a great story is Big Cass. William Morrissey, a couple of weeks ago. This guy was so impressive on TV that uh, people in WWE started looking again. 
you know, and he was a guy when he left, it was, it was done in such a way. It was like, nope, not going to happen. And they got one look of him on the AEW TV and he looks like, I mean, like a million bucks, you know, his body's fantastic. He's, he, he, he looked a lot better in the ring. He's so much more healthier now than he was when he was there. Uh, and it got them talking to the point that, you know, th there's a possibility they want him. I mean, personally, I've been told that they would want to talk to him. They would, I mean, they were impressed. So, you know, a lot of this stuff goes hand in hand. And I think that forbidden door concept is going to play out. This is going to be the legacy of this promotion, hopefully where they're open to working with other companies and other performers. And it's not always about them coming up on top. You know, you want to build a program here. All right, what else do we have? No question. There we go. Uh, with Tony saying that he wants to keep the tradition of All Out in Chicago. Have you heard if they want to keep it in the now arena or possibly Wrig Wrigley Field? So I don't think they could do Wrigley in September. So that wouldn't happen. Um, I mean, it depends. If they're in the playoffs, maybe. But I, I maybe not if they're in the playoffs. But I, I don't see them doing that. Uh, I do see them staying in Chicago. I see them uh, being in the now arena for now. I haven't heard any changes. And we're approaching. I mean, we're in June already. So w at what point do you announce this? That they're going to change it. Now, if they get out of Chicago, that's fine. You know, that's okay because you're giving a lot to Chicago, but they gave a lot to Chicago the last time too. You know, you had two major back-to-back -back moments happen there in the United Center and, of course, at, at, at the Now Arena, which I was there. Still stand by the fact that's the best pay-per-view I've ever been to, and it, it's quite possibly, uh, it could be considered one of the best shows I've ever been to. I'll, I'll say that about that, that last year's uh, All Out. But I don't see them moving uh, out of Chicago. I don't. I have not been told any plans to move out of there. Especially for this year. All right, let's pull up another question here. Andrew. Any update on the possible return of Cesaro, Big Cass, and Johnny Gargano to WWE? Um, those are all fantastic wrestlers. I know Cesaro is looking to do something soon. I don't know. You know, like, I don't know where these guys are thinking. I haven't heard anything about Johnny Gargano except for the fact that I was always told that he won't be wrestling until uh, the baby arrives. And the baby arrived a while ago. So most likely he's getting back to planning something. But where would he fit in the best, right? Like a year and a half ago, a year ago, I would have said AEW for sure for Johnny Gargano. But look at the amount of talent that they have on that roster that were in higher positions than Johnny was in WWE. And they're they're kind of in limbo, right? Like not, not to say that they're not doing anything, but these guys have not uh, been elevated to a top position yet for a number of reasons, positive, bad, it doesn't matter. But Johnny, you know... I, where, where, how would he fit into AEW? What position would he be in? We would obviously get to see some pretty cool programs, but would he be in a key position on that TV? I don't know. Ring of Honor is another one that they got to rebuild, right? That's another promotion that Tony has that needs TV, needs good talent. Johnny Gargano would be great for them. You know, if this is your NXT, right, which I think they should treat it as their, as some sort of an NXT type property for, for AEW. A Johnny Gargano and a Samoa Joe and whoever else you want to put in there would be unbelievable. I just think, you know, I, I don't know. Now, as far as uh, Big Cass goes, I know that they're interested in him. Cesaro, he has a fantastic relationship with everybody at WWE. I don't know if he would want to go there or do something else. It's just a matter of time. We're going to find out because a lot of people are getting that itch. A lot of questions over Bray also. All right. Uh, what else do we have? Does Big E come back in September? Man, I hope. Uh, I, I, I would say that, you know, the injury he had is not a quick recovery. And, and there's a lot of hiccups around the, uh, on the way when you have an injury the way he did. So it, it's all going to matter on how he feels. Because you also, here's the other thing. He's going to have to get over the nerves of coming back after an injury like that. So maybe a little bit of a style difference in the beginning. Maybe, you know, there's a lot of 
conditioning goes into play. Working out goes into play. So I would love to see him come back as soon as he can, but he he has to be 100% healthy to come back. So I don't know if September is a realistic time frame. I have not heard a time frame at all about a return for Big E. And, uh, you know, maybe that's, I don't know if that's a positive. God, I hope it is. Because, uh, you know, what what a, everybody that I know that deals or, or speaks to Big E or deals with him in any kind of business relationship or personal relationship will say this is one of the sweetest men that they've ever met in their lives. And it's, I want nothing but the success for him. And I want to see him back in that company winning the title again. Let's get another question here, Matt. So Jay White, Hangman, and Cole Okada, I'm okay with that. Okay, Johnny. Great avatar. Great image here. Nice always sunny image there. Uh I would I'm okay. I'm more I'm more into I'm more into the um Hangman and Jay White than I am Adam Cole and Okada. I don't know why. How long is Sting out in AEW? I don't know. He, I I know he's a little banged up here, so uh I, I don't I don't have a time frame there. I should have a time frame. Matt, do you know what 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 the time frame is? Okay. Because I most of the, you know yeah, I'm going to give you guys a little inside on how we do things. Uh, it's a little all over the place, but at times I have this group chat where I just throw all my info in that I get throughout the week. And then I have Matt, our producer, curate all the stuff that I've thrown in there. So I, I don't have a time frame. I can find out, though. I'll ask. Get a couple more questions here before we go to break. All right excited for the first ever cage match in stardom i gotta tell you sean uh i need to give stardom more uh of my time i know that they're putting on some amazing amazing stuff i've seen a couple matches recently that they've had uh it's just it hasn't been in my uh just in my queue of content i never get to it it's like impact i want to see i want to watch impact i know they're doing some pretty cool stuff it just by the time i get to it it's the following week I guess that was the last question. You know what? When we come back from break, we'll do rapid fire. Two more questions after the break. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Final few minutes of the show. Andrew Zarian here. Sunday edition. Absolutely love doing this on Sundays with you. Let's do, let's do two more questions here. Let's, let's go. Boom. There we go. Uh, do you know of any plans for an international AEW tour? So Jimbo in our chat room, I don't know where this came, question came from, either chat or uh, Twitter. I, I would, you know, they they want to go to the UK. I know that. I don't know, you know, obviously the pandemic uh, affected a lot of that. International travel is still a little uh, murky. Uh, they haven't even gone to Canada yet. Uh, I think Canada's first, obviously, uh, to do a show there. But I know that they would love to go to the UK. They have a huge uh, following there. Uh, start off there and then go from there. You know, I don't know how well they do in, in like France or Spain or Portugal. I, I don't know how their European numbers are, but I know for a fact they do. You know, the UK numbers, uh, that, they have a big following in the UK. I, I see it on Twitter all the time. I get a message from the fans. All right, what else do we have here? All right, what is the match you hope is on Forbidden Door? I would as you know, I've, honestly, I wanted to see, I really wanted to see Punk and Tanahashi. That's not happening. But my second was Okada and Danielson, and that's not happening. We're getting Zack Sabre Jr., which is fine. But I wanted to see what those two do, and we'll get it the next time around. It's okay. It's fine. I, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not as worried about this card because just the sheer uh, fact that they're doing the show together in the building they're doing it it's it's going to be a great show regardless so uh orange cassidy toro yano hmm my least liked person in new japan toro yano not a big toro yano i don't care for his dvds his blu-rays this what is this there's an emoji that has this uh guys i had a lot of fun with you guys today but before we leave hey i want to remind everybody you can follow me on twitter you can message me on twitter anytime at andrew zarian Hit me up there. You can follow everything else I'm doing. The Matt Men Podcast on Thursdays. We're live pal with Garrett Gonzalez on Tuesdays. And of course, this each and every Sunday. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be back next week. See you later. <laughs>